Many ancient texts describe a time when the moon didn't exist, or at least it didn't exist here. Aristotle wrote about the Pelasgians, who lived in ancient Greece since the oldest days, at a time before the moon. Apollonius of Rhodes also talks about a time when the moon wasn't yet in the sky. In ages past, before the silver orb adorned night's somber shroud, Gaia stood alone. The tides lay still, untouched by Luna's grasp, and darkness reigned where moonlight never cast its tranquil spell. Oh, how the gods conspired to shape that radiant disk. Greek historian Plutarch wrote about the Arcadians. They were a very ancient people who lived in Greece. Plutarch described them as a pre-lunar people. Roman poet Ovid also wrote about the Arcadians. In Arcadia's lush fields, where Pan's flute sang, a truth lies hidden, nearly forgot by man. The Arcadians are said to have possessed their land before the birth of Zeus, and the folk is older than the moon. Evidence of a sky with no moon has also been found on the other side of the world. In the ancient site of Tiwanaku in Bolivia, there are symbols that depict the moon coming into orbit. And this happened at a specific moment in time thousands of years ago, long before recorded history. According to the Zulu and other ancient cultures, the moon didn't form. The moon was built, and not built here. The Zulus say that the moon was built in another part of the galaxy by the alien race that Wawani and Mpanku came from. They built the moon as a monitoring station to keep an eye on us, the human race. But what kind of aliens are depicted in these old legends? They're not the small gray aliens. The aliens that built the moon are reptilian. It's my conclusion um, over many years that uh, reincarnation is a trap. 
It's not that it doesn't exist, although I don't think it, it's quite the same as it's explained. It's a bit more subtle, maybe, but I do think it's a trap. The recycling of souls, reincarnation, is the machinery of this universe. John Lear, son of Learjet inventor Bill Lear, flew his first flight at age 14. He became a stunt pilot, a contract pilot for the CIA, and set multiple aviation records. But John Lear is most known for his theories about the alien presence on Earth. He's also exposed a lot of information about the cube-shaped soul catcher on the moon. The soul catcher is the, what we, I think, is the uh, six mile high uh, tower in the middle of Sinus Medi, right in the middle of the uh, center of the moon, if you look at the moon, and uh, the famous photo that Richard found, uh, Lunar Orbiter 384M, shows that huge tower. He also has two other photographs that, uh, that show that tower. Uh, I think that tower is um, what I call the soul catcher. When you uh, die, your soul is the ghost of the soul catcher. But the moon isn't the only place these soul catchers exist. There are several uh, soul uh, transmission stations, both on Earth and on the moon. And depending on where you're going in your next lifetime, uh, is which transmission station uh, takes over. When you couple John Lear's belief in the soul catcher with David Icke's theory that we're stuck in an endless loop of reincarnation, an unsettling reality emerges that our only purpose is to serve as food for our alien jailers. And what's even more upsetting is that negative emotions are really what they crave. Supporters of the reptilian humanoid theory say that when there's a global event that affects millions of people, like a war or major conflict, it's our jailers at work. It might explain why Cro-Magnon Homo sapiens sapien is so violent. Why are we always in states of war? Why are we competing and always challenged by murder and violence? I really don't like the idea that we're not in control of our lives. And I really hate the idea that we're not in control of our death. So my mind just rejects the idea altogether. But then I found this. What the sh is that? That is the soul cube on the moon. Leaping lizards! See what I did there? This photo was taken December 6, 2021 by the Chinese-made lunar rover U-22 while exploring the far side of the moon. A cube-shaped object is clearly seen 80 meters from the von Karman crater. And for some reason, the China National Space Administration labeled this object Mystery Hut. And this only lends credence to the idea that the moon is a sort of observatory with a soul harvesting machine. There's even more evidence that Earth is actually what some call a prison planet. In his book, Humans Are Not From Earth, Dr. Ellis Silver contends that humans are actually from another planet. They were brought here thousands of years ago and mated with Neanderthals. The hybrid species is us. My thesis proposes that mankind did not evolve from native Earth organisms, but evolved elsewhere and was transported to Earth between 60,000 and 200,000 years ago. Mankind is supposedly the most highly developed species on the planet, yet is surprisingly unsuited and ill-equipped for Earth's environment. The Lunar Orbiter experiments vastly improved our knowledge of the Moon's gravitational field, indicating the frightening possibility that the Moon might be hollow. In November 1969, Apollo 12 launched as NASA's second manned mission to the Moon. One of the key objectives was investigating the Moon's interior. Apollo 12 astronauts placed seismometers on the lunar surface, similar to those used to detect earthquakes on Earth. The astronauts then intentionally crashed their ascent stage module into the Moon to gather seismic data. Now, instead of typical seismic patterns, the data showed the Moon vibrating for over an hour. The Moon was famously described as ringing like a bell. The phenomenon led some to speculate that the Moon might be hollow or contain significant hollow spaces. This theory is supported by the still classified Apollo 17 project called Chapel Bell. And this sounds like an experiment that has something to do with sound, but all these years later, it's still classified. Why? In 1970, two Soviet scientists proposed that not only is the moon hollow, the moon is an artificial spacecraft 
brought to Earth a long time ago. This spaceship moon theory explains many of the anomalies, like the low density, the sound reverberation, and why the moon is even here at all. Spaceship Moon also explains the strange crater issue. Crater issue? Oh yeah, moon craters are very odd. When an asteroid impacts a moon or planet, it leaves a crater. The bigger the asteroid, the deeper the crater, right? Yeah, I feel ya. Well, on the moon, no matter how big the object that impacts it, craters don't penetrate deeper than a couple of miles. Now, this could be explained by a rigid, impenetrable outer shell encasing the moon. Spaceship Moon! Mm-hmm. If the astronomical data is reduced, it is found that the data require that the interior of the moon is less dense than the outer parts. Indeed, it would seem that the moon is more like a hollow than a homogeneous sphere. Data also indicates the moon's core is less dense than the outer layers, the complete opposite of, well, every other celestial object ever discovered. This could be evidence that the moon has vast hollow inner cavities. Also, the soil and moon dust on the surface are actually older than the rock and soil within the moon. That only makes sense if the interior moon was mined, hollowed out, and then the material brought to the surface. Now, there are scientific explanations for all of this, but to be honest, they fall short. Looking at all the anomalies and unanswered questions about the moon, the best explanation for the moon is an observational error. It doesn't exist. It's easier to explain the non-existence of the moon than its existence. We cannot help but come to the conclusion that the moon, by rights, ought not to be there. The fact that it is, is one of those strokes of luck almost too good to accept. The moon is weird. It shouldn't be there. And it might be hollow. But is it a transmission device that affects our behavior? Well, there's more crime during a full moon. There are more car accidents. Sensitivity to pain is higher during a full moon. A full moon disrupts our sleep. Some people are prone to erratic behavior during a full moon. This is called the werewolf effect. This is also where the word lunatic comes from. Talk to a cop or a nurse. They'll tell you that they can tell when it's getting close to a full moon. Again, science tries to explain this erratic behavior. Like there's more crime during a full moon because it's easier to see. Uh, no, it's also easier to get caught. Right, the science is thin. And notice that all these changes in behavior during a full moon are negative. More crime, more pain, more car crashes. If there are aliens feeding off our negative emotions and they use the moon to do it, well, suddenly everything makes sense. And you got to understand this stuff, people. God taking you to different levels now, levels of the sod, and you have to be able to understand how great God is for you to fall in line with his messenger so you can see the truth is because you're going from mortal to immortality. Mortal, you stay in the frequency of the moon, then in the sun coming in the daytime, but the frequency of the moon coming to dumb you down and, and, and all this other stuff and get you afraid. A lot of people are afraid of the night. <laughs> okay? Dracula, you know, werewolves and all this other nonsense. Kind of energy. That's why they play that on TV. Okay, you finna deal with a Halloween pretty soon. And that's why they play that like that on TV. You don't see the sun shining and, and the Dracula in the sun time, but when the sun shows, Dracula be high. Okay? And the world will be high. <laughs> when the sun come out, they always in the creeping of the night, creeping around trying to scare you. Okay? And it's trying to tell you something. You got to understand this stuff because it's in the Bible. It's there to show you a truthism. Isaiah is saying, Israel in America and the 12 nation states See, there's an Israel have to come up in America. Israel ain't about a place. Israel about the name of a person. And this people that's under this prince called Israel is going to be known as the peoples of Israel. And you got to see that. It ain't about something way over there. Israel came coming now, not then. So it's nothing. So what they done, done, done orchestrated and gave you is a lie. Okay? It's a lie. And you got to see the truth is of my people. Israel is to come to the United States of America to be born in the United States of America. He's Shiloh. He's Michael. He's the true Jesus. And you got to see that. Not that Jesus that they produce because the name Jesus is an anagram to his name, Louis. 
And you got to see this, my people. See, they ain't telling you the truth. They lying to you. And you've been following the lie because your preacher been teaching you that lie. And these and they have became the prophets of Baal. And that's why God have to send you Elijah. And Elijah is another name for Lewis. Anagram. Study it, my people. Not taken away from the one that I give a lot of respect to, Elijah Muhammad. I give respect to that gentleman. Because he came saying some things that other ones we didn't say. He came telling you that the whole Bible is about the United States of America. Okay? He came telling you about the city in the sky. So I have to give credit to that. When God gave a man ability to bring that knowledge out like that in the midst of all of this. Okay? Now, let's go on with this. Okay? Revelation 12.5 and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was called up unto God and to his throne. Revelation 12, 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared for her, prepared of God, which is thought, they shall feed her there. Now notice this, man. I love when... When the initiate put things a certain way, only for the initiates to be able to translate. I want you to see this very carefully. If you read this, you're going to see a thousand, two hundred, and three score years. I mean days, which is his years. Now, I want you to look at this very carefully now. Look at it. It wasn't meant for everybody to read it. You got to translate this. Okay? Then you'll know what it is. Okay? It say, forget the 8,000. This is 2,803 score years. That's what it is. What is 2,160 years? That's the length of the zodiac. That's the length of, of Gemini. That's the length of... Uh, Taurus, that's the length of Aries, that's the length of Pisces, and that's the length of Aquarius. So Aquarius is the age we've been, we are barking into, and it's saying that the time of Aquarius is the time that she will be in there, protected. In other words, the church of the priesthood, of the ones that work in the arts, that priesthood, that new Christianity is, is what they call she. It go back to Hagar when he said that Hagar will have a child with the ox. This is that same child that they're talking about. God bringing that child or that priesthood to the peoples of color here in America. The Hebrew aboriginals of America. And you got to see that. This is what this is all about. You can find this in different areas, not just in Revelation. You could go and look where I said about Hagar and the child with art. Then you got to see this. In the age of Aquarius is that that time. And in the age of Aquarius is where they talk about you living, you will reign with Christ for a thousand years. The time of the great uh, substance and the land, the time of the Lord God thought, receiving the land of milk and honey. This is in that time period. And you got to see it. In the procession of the equinox, this is the art. You can understand that. As our planet come this way and Sirius come this way, everything's going to increase. This is the time that they're talking about. That new Christianity is going to reign and going to be safe in this area for 2,160 years and on. And this is why it's what it's showing you. 2,160 years. You got to see that. As our planet come this way and go and go this way, Sirius come this way and go that way. And as Sirius get close to us and we get close to, to Sirius, that means the intelligence of man's mind. You're going to go from mortal to immortality. Death wears thy stand, grave wears thy victory. That's what you can embark on with the great substance. Because he said to Abraham, when he said, after the 400 years of affliction, Thou shalt come out with great substance, and thou shalt go unto thy father and live at a good old age. 
age. A good old age means you're going to live like down here, like, like Noah lived to be 900 and something years. You're going to go all the way to the thousand, but you're going to live at a good old age. In other words, you, you're going to regenerate your age. You're going to go from, from uh, when people look 120 something years and they look 120 something years. No, you're going to go, you ain't going to even get that high before he start regenerating your age. You're going to go from 69, I'll say like that, or 70, whatever, in that area. And then you're going back to 35. You're going back to 35. Okay. You're going back to 35. Okay. You're going to be like a young man at 69, 70 years old. You're going to look like a 30 or 35 year old person. Believe me, that's what the scripture tells you. And I'm telling you, that's why I say what it say. Death, where's thy stain? Grave, where's thy victory? I'm telling you. When you hear people talk about near-death experience and they go and they look at some of their ancestors on the other side and they come back and they tell you, damn, grandpa look like he's young. These people look like they ain't no more than 35. Older person look like they know more than 35, 40 years old. The same thing is going to happen here. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So you're going to be able to live long jeopardy and the, the moon will not have its frequency uh, uh, hurting you because it will be trampled under your foot. That energy will be under your foot because you're drawing the energy of your son and the energy of Sirius. And you're moving forward and forward and forward. You eat properly, you think properly, and you live properly. All the wars be gone away. You won't be warned against nobody. And everybody gonna be up talking to you properly because you will be telepathic human. And in the telepathic arena, no one can lie to you because you're going to know what they're really thinking so they cannot afford to lie to you. See, these things is advancement that God's going to put on humanity. And you got to see that, my people. you got to see that. That's what the Jesus syndrome was all about. That was the Christ syndrome was all about. And you're going to walk in that. Look at it now. Let's go on. Joshua 1, 2, 3. Okay. And Joshua, when you look at Joshua, it's a code name. Joshua is also a code name for Lewis. And you look at Joshua 8. Okay. Now, therefore, arrive. Go over this Jordan. Thy and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Now Joshua was told to go over and take his children. Okay, and Joshua had 11 children. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Joshua also had two wives and two what they call women servants. Okay, so we're not going to get into that two wife thing about Joshua right now. We'll do that at a later date. We don't want to go and rattle nobody's cage right now. But you got to see this. That means that certain things that we have not accepted in the past will be acceptable. Okay? And not putting it where the man got to hand is. Nah, 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 nah. You can't just get you know, a, a more than one wife unless the council say it could be so. So don't think you could just, oh, I just go out and marry who I want to marry. I can do what I want to do. No, it don't work like that. No, it don't work like that. Certain things going to be done a certain way. And you got to see that. Let's go on. Okay. Now therefore, arrive and go over this joy, thy and all these peoples, unto the land which I give them, even to the children of Israel. Let's go on to the next one. Okay. Uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 3. Every place thought the soul of your feet shall thread upon Thought have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. And he's showing him, uh, 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 showing him the boot, showing him Florida or Judah, showing him Jordan, which is the Kissimmee River. Okay. Now, let's get into the name of the individuals. Uh, Marvin Creed, Joyce and Robert Cromwell, to Mary C. Fidel, 
Antoinette Mike Miller, Mike Mueller, Wanda Priestess, Eldon Journal, Wesley Cedars, Steve Thomas Sr., Steve J. Cole. These individuals, we thank God for them and we love to call their name because they are diligently, diligently here, helping this organization move forward. Okay, now let's go to the next board. Joshua 5, 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, thought, he lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went into unto him and said unto him, Art thy for us or for our adversary? See, what God is showing you here is this man with the sword is a military man that come from God. He come from God to make sure that there's a smooth transition into the land in which God has given his chosen people. See, when I talk about this, I know some of you, I could tell you all about God and, and the forces, but see, you don't know that there's forces out there, but the government do. See, the government do. Government already know that there's an alien, black alien force with soldiers, yay tall. And they done came and land on one of the military bases already to let them know And the craft was so big when it landed, it shook like a three-point earthquake. And see, the story is there. And the government know that. See, God have put that military force there to protect you. But see, it don't belong to no government that's on this planet. See, you got to remember that we are in, we shift. Our peoples and the knowledge can shift into dimension of time. That's why you see the Bermuda Triangle have the Garden of Eve inside the Bermuda Triangle. And if you go in there, you can't come out. You see what I'm saying? And the only one to go in there and come out the ones that God have chosen to go in and out. See, you're dealing with dimensions of time and you're dealing with a federation and you're dealing with something here that God done put together that is beyond your pay grade or your understanding. And that's why he has to send you a messenger to let you know. The Bible tell you what's going to happen before it happens. And God here to let his messenger bring to you the truthism that is to happen. Okay. Let's move this on. Okay. Daniel 4, 17. This matter, this matter is by the de decree of the watchers and the, the man and the, the man by the word of the Holy One to the intent that the living may know thought the most high ruler in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whosoever he will and set up over it the basics of man. Now, this is telling you that God could do what he want to do. He done came to me, thought that came to me, and thought have called me forth in the priesthood and as the royal. See, you got to understand that your preacher ain't seen no thought. And if he did, he will bear witness to that. Thought talk telepathic to who he approached and come to. When thought call you, that's Hermes, that's Machesi, that's from God the source. And when he call you forth, you haven't just been called at this time. You were called in the life before this. You ain't anybody. 
So when you see your name or see Nostradamus talk about you, you see Edgar Casey talk about your coming, you see Jane Dixon talk, talk about your coming, you see uh, Madame Bavosky talk about your coming, you see Buddha talk about your coming, you hear Muhammad talk about the Mark D and your coming, you see all this here, you don't have to bow to nobody. Be yourself. You may not see who's in front of you, but God do and your government do. And you got to understand this, people. This is no joke in time. This world is going to change, and it's going to change rapidly. 2025 and 2026, you're not going to know what you're dealing with. You're not going to see this world the same anymore. God going to shake it up inside out. And you might well get ready for it. But you're not going to be destroyed. God going to protect his own. So I have to let you know what time it is. Next year, every American possibly need to hear what's going to go down. And you need to know this, my people. Let's move this on now. Okay. Daniel, Daniel 4.13. A watcher and holy one came down from heaven. Verse 14. And he cried aloud. He cried aloud and said, Thus hew down the tree. Hew down the tree. What is this tree? This bought was sent to America. What is the tree? The tree is America, the system in America. Hew down the tree. Okay? America was built on the Hebrew soil. America was built and put its federal papers on the ideology of the Iroquois. Study. The Native American government that helped inspire the United States Constitution. The constitutional framers may have viewed indigenous people of the Iroquois Confederacy as inferior, but that didn't stop them from admiring their Federalist principles. Orrin Lyons, who was a faith keeper for the Iroquois Confederacy, went to the Senate Select Committee on Indian Affairs and broached this subject. Brian says, and then I went down to Washington and testified before the Senate Select Committee on Indian Affairs. This motivated the committee's chair, Daniel Inui of Hawaii, to help Congress pass a 1988 resolution formally acknowledging the influence of the Iroquois Confederacy on the United States Constitution. In addition to this recognition, the resolution reaffirmed the continuing government-to-government -government relationship between Indian tribes and the United States established in the Constitution, an acknowledgement of the legitimacy and sovereignty of Native nations and their government. Study it, my peoples. These founding fathers went off the knowledge of the Iroquois. But they ain't gonna tell you that. The people that already ran this land. They got their founding fathers, these people got their authority to do, although they, the king said this and that from Europe, but the Iroquois gave them the room to do it. But see, they ain't telling you none of that. They keeping that, they, they keeping that hidden in the academic world. They're not talking to you and telling you none of that. You got to see what's going on now. Verse 14. He cried aloud and said, Thus hew down the tree and cut off her branches territory, shake off her leaves and scatter his fruit, the wealth. Let the beasts, the nations, give away, get away from her under it and the fowls from her branches. Verse 15. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his root in the earth. Leave the stump of a root in the earth. Why? Because God is going to make a new thing. Phoenix bird prophet, prophecy. God is going to put his kingdom, a God, on this earth. The Hebrews' philosophy with the Bible that King James sent here is part of what they know as the stump, the ideology, the narrative of God that's meant for this planet. 
meant for this nation and this continent. And we have to see all this. And Daniel is seeing this. Even with a band of iron, we're coming out of what? The Iron Age. We're coming out of this age here. Out of this Iron Age into the brass of the Bronze Age. And we have to understand uh, the iron and brass until the tender grass of the field of the world. I mean, this is a new thing. Grass represents the people. God is doing this for the people so the people can move forward. For the chosen people and the Gentiles to move forward. And we have to see this. Deuteronomy 3 31 8. And the Lord, He it is, thought, those go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. See, your Savior, your true Savior is coming on the scene. That's why your messenger has to tell you about thought. He's coming on the scene. Who is the Machesitic? Who they say Jesus took the priesthood after? This person here with the code name. Jesus had the code name of this person here. That's who I took my priesthood after. See, they don't lie to you, and I know it's very difficult for you to understand, but I'm telling you like this. If you don't try to get the truth in you and understand it, God done said it, you will be damned. That means ain't no help for you. Now, you could follow your old way like the people of Noah did, or they could follow the prophet Noah that God sent to them. And he said, this day will be like a day of Noah. This day will be like a day of Lot. This day will be like a day of Jonah. You got to see this, my people. Now, that's the end of this. End of this. So we like you to make your donations. We still need that, that 10 people with the 100K and the others helping build this. You could, like I say, you could bring 500. You could donate 1,000. You could donate 5,000, 10,000. What is best to do and help make this happen. And it's very important, my people. You can make a donation to Louis Armstrong Ministry at 7536 Jane Lane North, Jacksonville, Florida, 32210, or Cross Rock at that same address. So you can use Cross Rock and go to Givelify on your mobile app on the charitable. That's Cross Rock, go to Givelify on your mobile app on the charitable. You also could go with PayPal at ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. That's PayPal, ArmstrongLewisJ at gmail.com. Also with at Cash App, dollar sign SWAU 1954. That's Cash App, dollar sign SWAU 1954. I'd like to say a prayer. Heavenly Father, bless these people. Bless this movement, Heavenly Father. Be there for them. Father, look into their lives. Look at the things that need to be, the doors need to be open for them. If it comes with a spouse and in a situation that they need to correct, work in harmony. It all will feel good about the situation. If it comes to job or finance, Heavenly Father, touch their wallet and their purse. Touch their account. That they can know that you are present there. When it comes to the children, etc., in the social environment, Heavenly Father, bless their children, bless their children that they stay healthy. Bless them that they be healthy. Heavenly Father. Father, help them elevate, Father. So they can know that they are walking in the truth, Father. And I say this in the name of our loving Savior, the Lord God, Father, and our God, the Almighty. So it's a